My dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big ROAS man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get a hundred dollar credit on your next ad campaign. Go to LinkedIn.com slash campaign to claim your credit. That's LinkedIn.com slash campaign. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Hey everybody, welcome to Boy wow. Podcast. I'm Mike. And I am Rusty. Rusty, welcome to Friday. Welcome to Friday. We're on Friday. It's Friday. Hey, it's Friday. I'm gonna jump off the front porch real quick here and tell everybody yeah. about my GoFundMe, Go if you don't mind, it. real Do quick. It. Okay. Uh, I mentioned it briefly in our Monday episode at the earlier of the week. Uh, I am currently attempting to become a United States citizen. For those of you that have been with the show for a long time. Uh, you know that I am originally from England. Uh, I've lived in the United States, obviously, the majority of my life, as you can tell by the sound of my voice. Uh, I am trying to raise the funds to pay for the lawyer and pay for all the processing fees. It all happens to be quite a bit, but not an outrageous amount in, in the sense of in sense of uh, crowdsourcing funds. I am uh, looking just for three thousand uh, dollars. I'll have a link in the description uh on on this video as well as any any other video we make until i reach the three thousand dollar mark uh I, i'd appreciate any help anything that goes over three thousand dollars is going to go to uh our building a home fund so if we do happen to break 3k that's that's what we're doing with the extra on that but uh i appreciate any help whether you share it whether you just pass it on to the next person i'd appreciate it even if you can't donate money a share is free uh and, and again i just uh, appreciate everybody in our universe and uh let's try to try to make me an american if if you if, if you make me an american well, i'll cook 50 hot dogs and i'll sit right here in front of the camera and eat as many of them as i possibly can and i'm proud to be an, an american, american where at least i shut up I what's more surprising cam <laughs> hey, cam right. said what's uh cam from uh your sports stuff yeah, cam, cam. cam. Cam Cam, he said, uh, what's more surprising, Rusty being British or Hank being from New York? Honestly, Hank being from New York would yeah, be more surprising because he hangs his hat on that. Let me tell you, that dude, uh, that dude lives He's been on our show before. Yeah, he has uh, been on our yeah, show up here. He was on an episode with us and uh, w- would love to have you back. By the uh, way, back on here anytime. Five days a week uh, from 11 a.m. Yep. to 12 p.m. Central. Good show. The Cam Show. I've caught a couple episodes. Uh, you need to have T Rex on, Cam. Uh, whenever you're talking about Baylor, you need to have old T Rex on there. Uh, we were talking about him yesterday. That dude's uh, that dude's a laugh, right? No, he's he's a good friend from school. Well, I've known him. We were talking about the guy yesterday. I've known him since like little kids. I've known him for a really really long time. He's All a, right. He actually just drove eleven hours to Ames, Iowa, to watch the game today. Oh wow! Uh, this is a uh, Friday, so we do some different stuff on Fridays. Uh, this is uh, the hilarious reason Tom Petty was asked to voice this cartoon character. So as we know, uh, Tom Petty did Lucky. 
Yeah. Uh, Tom Petty has since passed. And so he Rest in not, peace, Tom Petty. Yeah. yeah. He Last won't be part, dance with Mary Jane. He won't be part of the, uh, of the reboot or the continuation the or whatever you want to call it. But yeah. uh, and he'll be missed because I thought he did a great job as Lucky. He did a really good job as Lucky. He did a really good job with anything that he did, and that's why we know who he is. That's why he's a household name in America. It says the former Heartbreakers front man, which Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, uh, Voiced yeah. Elroy Kleinschmidt uh, on the beloved animated series King of the Hill for six seasons. Six seasons i didn't realize it was that long yeah it was uh was a quite a while well you got to think season seven is when he pops up yeah so we're only a season removed from lucky right now so anybody that all the lucky haters out there uh we're almost to lucky and, and once we get you more lucky. into I lucky I, I well i, I was never I like a really it. big fan of lucky and, a, right. and honestly this is where i start to lose my really intimate knowledge of the show is when lucky appears because I didn't watch it as much around that time. I had a lot going on in life about season when season six of King of the Hill came out, season seven rather. But I just uh, I wasn't as tuned in as I was for the first six first six seasons. So he, of course, was the husband of Luann Platter. Uh, yeah, he was her husband. Lucky boasted blonde, shaggy hair, crooked teeth, and slipped on piss. Instantly re recognizable nasal draw. Uh, it says according to the show's creator, those similarities were not accidental. Uh, Tom Pan why he landed the role of this cartoon character. In 2009 interview with Chicago Tribune, Mike Judge, uh, creator, discussed his prolific television career, including uh, when he convinced an international rock star to join the cast. Judge recalled the day he and showrunner John Altshuler were brainstorming about the show's then newest character, Elroy Lucky Kleinschmidt. Uh, John, who ran the show for the last seven, eight years, had written this character named Lucky and described him as looking like Tom Petty without the success. <laughs> Which, I mean, that's that's pretty good. That's kind of true. Good. That's kind of true. I guess he, he would kind of resemble Tom Petty a little bit without the success for sure. Yeah, he said that. Uh, I don't know why I didn't really like him. I, honestly, Mike, I think the reason why I didn't like him is because he reminds me of people that I know in my real life so much that it's like insulting. It's like, man, I got to deal with people just like him in real life. So for me, it was... Uh, it was too too close to home, too real, I guess. It says uh, that they both just kind of thought, well, what if we just tried to get Tom Petty? And uh, they apparently they they him. called him through his agent or whatever, and he goes, yeah, I'll do it. I mean, it would, like didn't take anything for him to do it. Uh, it well, no, he, that's, that's the thing. And I think that uh, if you can recall, that was one of the reasons why Dale wasn't voiced by uh, – who is he supposed to be voiced by? I, oh, it was I uh, can't uh, top of my the, head. The, um, the guy from the office. Sticky Fingers Bandit. And from no, it was the Sticky Finger Bandit. The guy that played in Home Alone. It was not the oh, not the short guy. The tall one. Not not Joe Pesci, but the, the other guy. In, uh, the the Boy Scout movie. Um, yeah, that guy. Whoever the tall, curly haired guy was. That the well, I can't remember his the the, the actor's name, name that either. plays him. But it's that guy that was supposed to do his voice, and he had just come up off of the Home Alone movie, so he was trying to get a payday from him. And they were like, "Well, this isn't a payday right now thing. This is a payday, you know, couple seasons down the road thing." And he didn't want no part of it because he wouldn't get paid up front. True. Daniel Stern. There you go. Thanks, Artie. Uh, Cam got it too. Cam got it. Daniel Stern. Cam. Yeah. Daniel Stern. There you go. Good job, Cam. Uh, all right, so it says um, he said he'll do it. He just killed it at the table read. And then he said, anytime you want me to do it, I'll do it. Turns out he really meant it. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, for so sure. It says Petty voiced Lucky for 28 episodes. He became a fan favorite character uh, thanks to his unassuming charm and okay. subtle nods to Petty. The so writer slipped into the script like when Lucky told Bobby yeah. he would help him run down that dream of eating tortilla chips directly off the production line, referencing uh, the 89 song uh, Running Down a Dream from Full Moon, Full Moon Fever. Yeah, so I didn't even realize those those references were in there. Yeah, they're in there. That's cool. Uh, Tom Petty died in 2017, which still shocks me. So 28 episodes dead. is really not that much lucky that I thought then. Cause you got to think mm. we're on season six yeah. and, uh, I think he got referenced more than anything. You know, what like, episode number is this? Thing. What episode number were we just on? We were on 17. Yeah, it was 17. We just did. No, I know, but there's uh, the epi the actual episode number. Hold on, give me a second. After, like episode, he, like after two Tom something. Petty died, Mike Judge released a statement and said, we had all grown up on his music, that unique voice of his, and have him as the voice of Lucky on King of the Hill was just wonderful. He said he was always a pleasure to work with, such a funny guy, he'll be greatly missed. 
Uh, it says, <clears throat> in a sad, ironic turn of events, the woman who voiced Petty's character opposite Luann Platter also met a tragically premature death. Yeah. Brittany Murphy voiced Luann for the entirety of the original King of the Hill series. Like Petty, Murphy suffered cardiac arrest that led to her death. The coroner determined her death was accidental and caused by pneumonia, iron deficiency, anemia, and multiple drug intoxication. Well, you got to think it's not really that. Uh, it, it, if, if Lucky's only in 28 episodes, we're on episode 121 right now. So really, you don't have that much Lucky in there as much yeah. as you would think. No, not as much as you thought. It says, I'm beyond excited. King of the Hill is coming back. Thought that Brittany Murphy and Tom Petty not being able to come back. I'm sobbing. That's what somebody wrote on X. Uh, King of the Hill reboot should lean into Tom Petty and Brittany Murphy's absence by having Hank and Peggy raise their child, which forces them to confront the modern world way more as retirees. Another writer, writer wrote. Um, it says that um, the revival is set about to that. release next year. Which, which I they're real hush about a lot of that stuff because. Uh, with all the information that I have available to me, that's not always uh, the same information that everybody else has available to them. There's really no talk or anything like yeah. the, like the back channels, I guess you would say that I have access to. There's really no discussion of any of that other than the voice actor situation, which they said has already been addressed. Other than that, I really, there's really not much information available out there about anybody else's life other than what, uh, Adlon has said about Bobby being a fusion chef in Dallas or something like that. That's pretty much the only information that's available. I would like to know uh, if they did a Rick and Morty thing and got people that are really good at the voices and they've replaced all these actors and they have people that are, you know, spot on with it. Cause Rick and Morty, honestly, uh, as far as switching from voice actor to voice actor, because of course Justin Roiland had some stuff go on uh, off off the off the air issues, and they replaced him with two other people. I think they did a really good job. So if they could do that good of a job and not have to use artificial intelligence to substitute, I feel like King of the Hill itself could do a really good job. Or uh, if they did use AI using their voices uh, or whatever, uh, apparently. I think they can capture enough of their voices at this point to be able to do it. it yeah. And they're going to have access to different models than we do as far as language models go. Yeah, they'll have different. They'll have so a commercial I, access to it in a way that we don't. But also, yeah, I was reading. The other thing, though, think about this. Those three people. Yeah. None of them would have fought the reboot. None of them would have not come back. You know no. what I mean? Yeah. All of them would have showed up. That's the thing with this show Nobody is. Had any hard feelings or anything like that. I think that everybody that was attached to the show and the reason why they were able to get everybody back that was attached to the show is because the show shouldn't have ever ended, honestly, sure. the way it did or at all, maybe. It's got such a cult following. And when you go look at a lot of podcasts that are Screw ran by you, two Cleveland. guys like us talking about a TV show, a lot of them are like 99% male. But if you look at the demographics for our show, we're like 70, 30, 60, 40 Good. male, female in Good. between in between 70, 30, 60, 40 on our demographics. So King of the Hill is a really diverse audience for a show. So the fact that it even ended to me was uh, like the death of King of the Hill on TV was just stupid. Well, especially when you when you look didn't at make a whole lot fact, of sense. Especially when you look at the fact that the Simpsons have been on for thirty years or whatever it's been, you know? and the Simpsons trudges on through low ratings and everything. They don't care about any of it. That, they just make. Did you see that uh, they used AI on this last episode? They ran their their series finale the other day. Yeah, it was the season premiere for the fiftieth season. Yeah, but they did the did season premiere finale. was a series finale for the whole series. They they've fun. got a handful of episodes. And it was which I thought was kind of cool. Which it's a, he yeah, because he's one of the original yep. writers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, he's one of the I think he started in like 93 with them because uh him and Greg Daniels both were writing oh. for they were both writing for yep. Saturday Night Live. And then he went Well, they were they were uh like roommates. In Har at Harvard, yeah. Yeah, they were roommates. They were they used to write so, for the Lampoon yeah, together. They still work together. All right. Well, um, we are uh, we are super excited about the uh, reboot, re redoing, retelling, uh, continuation, whatever you want to call it. 
um, I am beyond excited about that. I yeah, I'm really see, excited about it too. See how it turns out, I think it's going to be fine. Um, I, I again, like we've said over and over, we trust uh, Judge and uh, anybody else that's worked on this show. Uh, so we'll see. I mean, it'll be great until it's not. You know? And not only that, me and Mike have uh, we've promised over and over again, and hopefully we're still able to keep that whenever it comes time. But on the actual midnight hour it probably it depends on what coast they release it on if they oh, release like, it on like to stream it and, yeah or 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 do a watch along with it or whatever it is yeah. they yeah. uh if they release it on the east coast it'll actually be 11 for us but if they release it on the west coast it'll be i don't even know how they do that anymore like one in the morning i don't know how they do it either i hope they go east coast because if they go east coast then we could sit at, at, at 11 and watch mm -hmm. it but I imagine Mike being an Austinite. Hopefully, they release it at midnight our time, yeah, and, and so. we can do that. I but either way it goes, me and Mike are gonna do our best and attempt to release the first bit of content on the internet for the the new the I new did season. I did the best I could, and I reached out to the production company and Mike Judge and said, "Hey, what about premiering the first one here?" You know, yeah. and I'm like, Dude, "Why the hell wouldn't you?" you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think it's beyond the pale to think something like that. So, I, mean, I don't know. I'll I'll follow up and try again. But uh and, or anything. You know, it may not happen, but or anything. I would love to just talk to him. I've reached out to him so much. I, I stopped for a I while. I wish they would premiere it at uh the uh I used to call Bandera like what's three the, times a week. What's the the, the Austin uh, the not the Ice House, the uh theater there, the the Talking about Stubbs? No the oh, uh, theater thing where they do all the the Cl I was gonna say the Clifton Theater, but they don't sound right. I think of it. Um Anyway, I I would I would not be surprised if they premiered the first one in Austin. You know, with Mike that would Judge be cool if they had a premiere. Cool. Yeah. I wonder if they're going to do anything like that. I, I mean, it's where it's. I where would hope they would. Dale lived. It's where Mike's from. I mean, I would hope they would do something it just like makes that. Sense anyway, to do it there. But yeah. Again, it's Hollywood, so who the hell knows? All right, well, guys, thank you for joining us for this yeah, thank uh, you. little abbreviated Friday. Uh, remember that we are on Mondays and Fridays, and then we try to throw out some weird content every once in a while, like I did the last couple of weeks. Um, Rusty, you want to tell them where they can find us for all that? Yeah. Again, we're looking for voice actors for all this yeah. little weird stuff, that these little side projects that we want to do. So anybody that could do any of the King of the Hill voices, just send in voice clips. But specifically, we're looking for a Principal Moss, Jimmy Witcher, uh, Bobby Hill, uh john redcorn and john redcorn yeah. those are the four that we're looking for i will not appropriate anyone's uh anything but uh if we can find a john redcorn that would be great because i i would love to do a meditation podcast with john redcorn yeah 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 so please uh submit some sound bites we also we had we had a guy before that was doing sound stuff christopher so if you want to be a part of it yeah. uh you already have voices in the bag so if any of those four voices and you want to do any oh, of yeah, that you could do them all for all i care we could add in people doing whatever we just want to involve you guys a little bit more and we want to kind of diversify again and add some extra content for for y'all so if any anybody's interested in that just email us at b w a a a three a's b w a a a k o t h at gmail.com I'll be on the lookout for you guys to email me on that. Also, email us any suggestions, comments, uh, uh, recipes, or whatever. And as you see, Mike right now is putting on a devil costume. Be on the lookout for the new podcast for me, Mike, and others. Uh, we're still fleshing out some of the uh, pre-production stuff, but uh, the name of it is going to be The Hillbilly Hell Drive-In Picture Show. And, okay, I've got uh, a bone to pick with you. Yeah. Why is it not Hellbilly? Hellbilly. Hellbilly drive in picture. Hellbilly drive in picture show. It could be Hellbilly. I don't know. It's, it's got a little twang to it. I don't see nothing know? wrong with that. It kind of looks like a like I'm wearing a one of those uh do rags. Yeah, I don't see nothing with that at all. I don't see nothing wrong. Yeah, we could we could, we could probably check Hellbilly 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 drive in. Hellbilly Hell drive in picture show. Obviously, we're working on it still. We're still working on it. But it'll, be, it'll be me, Mike, and others, and it'll be a uh a movie podcast and then they'll have another element to it where on the tiktok i'll do tiktoks and stuff like that of me just so it'll be a discussion where me mike and somebody else or whoever whatever we end up coming up with will discuss whatever movie we picked that week but then you could go for the bonus features which is what 
uh, the social media will be the bonus feature part of it where it'll be me uh, and it'll be just that'll be scripted. I've actually already got the first script written for uh, the first movie we're going to do. You know, when I was younger, my horn, my horns would stand up like this. Now yeah. I've gotten older, my horns. You know, they have Cialis, right? Huh? You can just take some Cialis and it'll perk Rub it them right up. Or what was that? Uh, Shannon up? Sharp got caught on Instagram Live with audio of him having sex. Mm. And then he did a podcast the night after on Nightcap where it's him and Chad Ochocinco just discussing sports and life and stuff like that. And he was selling some kind of horny supplement. Horny root. I don't know what it was, but it was some kind of horny supplement. And he said, it keep you strong. It keep you strong. It, it keep you strong. All right, guys. Thank you again for joining us. We will see you next time. Yep. And uh, there's only one thing left to say. Oh, we Matanye. We Matanye, indeed. This has been a Rogue Media Network production. Are you a podcaster? Let's talk podcast hosting. Are you tired of your current podcast host? Need real support in a community that gets it? At Rogue Media Network, we offer top-tier podcast hosting services to help you thrive. From hosting and distribution to dedicated support, we've got you covered. Starting as low as $25 a month. Join our community of passionate podcasters today. Contact us at hello at roguemedianetwork.com.